Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for watching. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made this black swan themed cake. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel for new videos every week. That being said, let's get right into it. I'm starting off with two six inch cakes that I've leveled and cut in half and I'm going to be filling those with some Swiss brine buttercream that I've added a little bit of chocolate ganache to using my small offset spatula. I want my cake to be slightly tapered at both ends versus just round, so I'm taking my serrated knife and I'm just skimming a little bit off, just a scotch off of each side, making sure that one end is just a little more tapered to a point. When I had the shape I wanted, I'm adding a thin layer of that buttercream all around the outside just to lock in any crumbs so they don't end up in my final ice. I put that in the fridge for about 25 minutes to chill and then when I could touch my finger to the buttercream and none of it came off, I pulled it out and applied a thick layer of black buttercream all around the outside of my cake and I went in with my bench scraper to help me smooth out the sides. For all the buttercream that accumulated on the outside edge of my cake, I'm just pulling that gently into the center. The final ice does not need to be perfectly smooth like you would normally want for a fondant cake, just because I'm going to be covering it up with chocolate and more buttercream. So just a general smoothness is cool for this one. I have some black candy melts in a bowl here and I'm going to be zapping those for 30 second intervals in the microwave, stirring really well in between until they're melted. So to make each feather, I'm dipping a paintbrush into my chocolate and I'm just applying that like a little blobby to some parchment paper and then brushing the tail end of it. You want to make sure that it's not too thin because when you pick it up, it's just going to break, but you don't want like really big chunky feathers either. Try to find a nice happy medium. I did some larger, medium sized and smaller feathers. And once I was ready to go, I had enough of them, I started to apply them to the back of the cake first, so where it's more tapered. And I'm applying those down in a line of about four or five, depending on how thick I made them. Not really layering them on top of each other if I could help it, just so that they can stick to the buttercream. And if you find that your feathers aren't sticking properly, you can add a little dollop of buttercream to the back of each one as well. So I worked my way forward and as I approached the front, I started to use my smaller pieces of chocolate and then I used the smallest ones I had for the last line right in the middle. When I was all done with that side, I flipped it around and did the exact same thing on the other side and those back feathers, I just wanted them to kind of meet in the point. So here's what she looked like all finished. I wanted the front to have a little more oomph, so I added a couple extra feathers just sticking up a bit. To make the swan's head, I'm starting out with some black fondant that I added a little bit of Tylos powder to so it would firm up nice and hard. I'm rolling it out into this sausage shape, keeping one end fatter. And then I'm trying to pull out the front of that fatter end to create the beak portion. I just kept at it. You don't want to pull anything too hard because the fondant will tear. I tried to get that into like a pointed shape. And then I just went down and thinned out the neck a little bit right below where the head is and I tried to position it so it curved up a bit. When I was happy with the shape, it looked like this. And while it was still soft, I'm gonna insert a wooden skewer. I placed that a little bit back on the neck so I could push it all the way through so it would go into the head a little bit. And then I let this dry completely before I added it to my cake. So while that was setting up, I wanted to show you how I dyed my buttercream black. This is an American buttercream I'm using, so icing sugar and butter. 
and I went out and got myself some black cocoa powder. I got it at the bulk store. I don't really know if it's available in regular grocery stores, but definitely have a boo around for it. And I'm adding that into my buttercream and this is gonna give me a nice base color. This is the point where I'm gonna add my black food coloring gel. Having that black cocoa in there just allows me to add less of my food coloring gel and really less is more in my opinion. Food coloring gels in general, if you add a whole ton of them, it can change the consistency of your buttercream. It can make it taste a little bit off, like a little chemically. And really, it's just gonna stain people's mouths. So the less you use, the better in my opinion. And just starting out with that black cocoa really helps you out. So I'm going to show you how I made each flower with white buttercream versus black just because it shows up a little bit easier on the camera. I'm using a Wilton 104 tip so you can see it's fatter at the end and thinner at the other. And then I have a little piece of parchment glued down to the top of a candle that I cleaned up because I figured it was more of like a stable shot for you guys versus using one of those flower nail things. I'm starting out with a blob of buttercream right in the middle of my parchment paper and that's going to act as the center of my flower. I'm wrapping a couple petals around that center piece, just positioning my piping tip with the skinny end at the top and going around in like these arches. So starting from the bottom and just swooping up a little bit before I bring it back down. I added three more petals around that and then five petals after that. I did smaller ones and larger ones. You just want to keep working your way out and you can kind of make them as open or closed as you want just depending on how far back you tilt your piping tip. Again, I know these are not like professional grade flowers, but they did kind of look like flowers. So that's what I was going for and I was really happy with that. When I was finished piping, I put all of my flowers into the fridge to chill so I could handle them. And I'm going to make the crown for my swan. So I've rolled out this long strip of white fondant and I'm just going to start cutting out these little triangles in the top. I found a little container that matched the size that I wanted and I dipped it in some cornstarch to keep my fondant from sticking. And I'm just going to wrap that around and trim a seam at the back. While that was firming up, I went ahead and started to add my flowers to the cake. I'm just adding a little bit of buttercream to the top just to already create like a little bit of a mound so my flowers aren't super flat. And then I'm gonna start placing them down. These are chilled so I was able to handle them. I did big ones and smaller ones and just kind of mixed it up. To fill in any gaps, I just went around with more of that black buttercream and a leaf tip. To create the eye and the beak, I mixed together some food grade alcohol with a little bit of my Rolcom Super Gold Luster Dust and painted that on. I also painted the crown in the same gold and then once I had that right in the position I wanted it, I added a little bit of water to the bottom so it would stick in place. And this was a final result guys. I've seen a couple of these designs on Instagram in like pinks and whites and they're super beautiful and then I finally had a request for one so I'm really happy I got to have a crack at it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you did and I will see you in the next one.